terrible. It's something that I think they will live to regret. But that to one side, the best thing that Team Dignitas can do now is try and stay as positive as possible. Sure, they'll know in the back of their heads that if Hellraiser win this one, they'll lose the grand final. But, you know, they've got to focus on the positives and just forget about previous maps and focus on winning one map of CS. Focus on winning Inferno. And then you can forget the first four maps that we've seen even because it'll all come down to the fifth and final map in this best of five, which will be Cobble. So I think that's the mentality that Team Dignitas will have to take. And when you consider how much experience is within this Team Dignitas lineup, I think they'll be more than capable um, on doing so. Well, crucially, Hellraisers will be starting on the CT side here. and It is the favoured side, so... I'll be feeling pretty confident going off the back of their last win and going straight into starting CD side. It's going to be tougher than Dignitas would like starting on this T side. But saying that, if they get some momentum, get some early rounds and really stun Hellraisers into submission, then starting on the T side might not be such a bad thing. Well, let's wait and see. On the T side, it always really does you a world of good if you can win the pistol round, you know, and capitalize on the first three rounds, especially when you went on the T side on a map like Inferno, you're only really going in search of five or six rounds. So if you manage to get an early easy three rounds and it makes your life so much more easier later on. But, uh, anyways, here we go. Talking about storming into the lead, Kirby is going to get first blood with a Glock kill straight onto Angel. Schneider will too get killed and uh, if Rubino's not careful he could fall to the P2000 of Stiko. Because he's been very brave here getting up close and personal to his Glocks. They're going to start rushing him and he manages to get a nice tap in there and he keeps going for his one taps but runs out of ammo and he'll be chased down by MSL. That's the danger there by going so deep with that pistol. Eventually you're just going to get overrun by these Glocks so deciding not to buy time. Went for info and frags instead and hasn't paid off. Dignitas double the, num double the men. Make that Quadruple the men. Styco and his 6 HP, last man alive for Hellraisers. Yes, indeed. And I'm sure it's only going to be a matter of time until they catch a glimpse of him. And it will be Rubinho to get his third kill of the map so far. 1 0 to Team Dignitas. For those asking, this game is, I repeat, this game is being played on the latest version of CSGO. And both teams, I believe, have just come to a gentleman's agreement simply not to use the R8 revolver. I guess, obviously, the uh, rifle changes, they can't really uh, undo that, but they're willing to play with them. But uh, it's brought us an amazing game of Counter-Strike so far, to be fair. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, these guys just getting on and getting used to the patch, unfortunately. And also, the, uh, the round timers, just to clarify, are still the old ones of 145 and 35. It's a double kill there from Snyder, and Dignitas are bailing. They're spooked. <laughs> well, you would be spooked if you were on the receiving end of that, but Hellraisers know exactly what's happening to, in fact, pretty much, yeah, all of the reinforcements over towards the B-bomb site, rotating over towards A. Kirby's going to use that Kalashnikov to get the headshot onto Oscar, but the rest of the Hellraiser troops are marching in. But to no avail, unfortunately, if you are a Hellraisers fan, Schneider last man standing with only a Desert Eagle in hand. And, well, he's falling back to B. Probably the safe decision here. I mean, whether he keeps the Eagle or not into the next round, he'll still get the same amount of money. And if it'll be on that CT side, and if you can save it into next round with full health, then maybe you can pick up another kill or two, like he did this round. So, Deagle definitely worth saving. He might get lucky catching a terrorist exiting through second mid, perhaps. It's gone to that second mid balcony area, but I don't think he's going to see anyone because I, <laughs> I proved wrong instantly. They cast his curses. Kirby peaks top of second mid and gets his face removed. So 2-0 to Dignitas, Hellraiser's most likely full eco this round, could see a P250 maybe on Schneider, but uh, no, he took, he, he, sorry, my bad, he took the Deagle with him from the next round, didn't he? So uh, yeah, he's not going to invest really in anything, full eco almost from Hellraiser's, and they'll buy up properly come the next round. So they've opted to stack the B-bomb site early once again, with pretty much almost four players there, one of the four pretty much on a quick rotation. 
Near arch side in CT spawn between the two bomb sites, but MSL he stormed straight into CT spawn with that Mac 10. But hello, Angel with the one deep straight onto MSL, and if Dignitas aren't careful, if they head towards B, they could walk into the Hellraiser trap. But instead, they're heading back to A. Got to be careful here, not to rush it. Got to stick together, keep formation, not let themselves get separated. Work as a unit to clear this site and. They won't let the players lurking in. Boiler that's Styko fragging, but unfortunately, Kofik's gone on his own and he could come up a copper here. Tenski. Luckily, Tenski, yeah, watching his teammates back there. It was a risky moment. But great play nonetheless. Patrick for Tenski. Angel gets sniffed out and uh, Mac 10 out as well. So Kirby trades away that Mac 10. For the AK 47, 5 AK 47s now for Team Dignitas. Meanwhile, Hellraiser's Schneider saved up a lot of money. He was already on over 3k the last round. He's going to buy up an AWP and then hand it over to Oscar. So, it uh, be interesting to see how the use of that AWP on the CT side develops. They're going to like, put it up on quad side of mid, backed up and not playing on apartments early round. So, this split a push on A, exactly the count you want to see how the Schneider's gone big from the smoke there. Definitely has. <laughs> Full on VAC moment. For Schneider, leaving Tenski in a one versus four, and Stiko is quick to pounce straight on him. Three one the score. Hellraisers quickly, as soon as they got their M4s in their hands, they made Dignitas pay the price. Unfortunately, though, they still have to deal with at least one more round of AK 47s and Galils. And if they don't, their economy will reset and they will be made to pay the price. Very fast round from Dignitas there, trying to counter Hellraisers, try and build up some momentum and carry it on into the later rounds, but shut down completely by Hellraisers. Uh, great timing on pulling back quad and the spray down from Arch just completely pincered Team Dignitas. Here we go. Seems to go try and do the same on Banana. Yeah, they put the smoke down towards the bottom of Banana, then pop flash through, but Kucha. More than ready. Rubino, I really like the position he's in now. He should be able to stop any rotating CTs. And he does. So now the bomb will get planted straight at the barbecue by Kirby. Leaving Schneider and Stiko with it all to do. Nades going down on towards the bomb site. And it's in fact going to blow up the guy who planted the bomb in the form of Kirby. A nade from Schneider as well is going to put Conflict down onto 45 HP. Rubino chimes in with a kill. And now, Dignitas. Have yet another round. Hellraisers, the economy will reset. Not able to capitalize, unfortunately, on winning uh, the round prior to the one previous to the round that we just witnessed. And Dignitas storming into uh, a 4-1 lead. Yeah, so uh, Deagles, three of them, brought up by Hellraisers, no Kevlar, no utility. Deagles have been so strong for Hellraisers so far in this matchup, I don't blame them for buying three of them. But AKs across the board for Dignitas, they're not going to use the AWP. Save that for the late game, which I think is a correct decision early on. You want to lay down the law and probe out where these CTs are playing. Once you know where they tend to play, that's when you can start using the AWP and quick peek them. Kirby and MSL making their presence known towards B. Config just, you know, relaxing, chilling, taking his time at T steps to leave T spawn. Caught Oscar as he pushed all the way down mid, and uh, now Stiko is just going to try and hold on to this AK-47 and take it in uh, to the next round. Or is he? He's actually faked that he's gone into the apartments, hoping that one of these teams would hear it. Config peeks him. Stiko lands a headshot, but he's got to be careful because his position has been given away, and he will start to get hunted down. Here's another Dignitas player coming towards him, but he cannot kill him. That's the problem. 5-1. Stiko getting only one frag, but uh, losing that AK-47 in the process. Yes, indeed. And see a sort of forced buy come out here from Hellraiser. There's only one kit, so it's important to remember Snyder has a kit this round. If he isn't alive and dies the other side of the map and the bomb gets down, it's going to make life very difficult for Hellraisers. Something to bear in mind as we go into this. and We'll see a stack towards B, actually putting three players there and putting the two players on quad as we saw before, however this time Oscar does not have the AWP and Snyder hasn't rotated as early as he did last time. Oscar prepared for the Dignitas players looking to come his way, that nade dealing a bit of damage 
onto the Dignitas men making their way out of mid, but as we can see, Oscar playing this dynamic defense. Hellraiser's always looking to change it up, keep their opponents guessing. No round is ever identical, no round is ever the same, no round is ever easy to suss out for Dignitas. Which is, of course, what will make these rounds tougher and tougher. But, you can argue that Team Dignitas, they have a lot of leeway, because they are 5-1 up here on the terrorist side, on the less favoured side on Inferno. But, Team Dignitas have somehow all managed to make their way towards Banana. Bar one person over towards the A-bomb site. Angel, more like the Angel of Death as he sprays down two kills. Kirby says anything you can do, I can do better. And the rotation commences. Hellraiser players making their way straight towards his B-bomb site. And oh, Oscar through the smoke lands a headshot. And now this round could genuinely go either way. Bombs planted on B. Config needs to try and catch up with Kirby who's stranded. Stranded where Yellow used to be back in Source. And the question is, can the CTs retake this bomb site? Crisp shot from Schneider, sprays down the second, and he defuses the bomb as well. What a retake from Hellraisers. Yeah, it didn't give Dignitas any time to get set up there. Dignitas couldn't find that opening frag early enough. It took him so long to really make an entry onto a site and got caught on the retake because of it. They really needed to take their time and maybe be a little bit more aggressive before they finally commit to a site, but. It was a lack of info there, a lack of options, a lack of time, and they're forced to make a slap dash into a site, which turned out to be B, but didn't pay off, so now, time for a new plan. Well, the new plan, apparently, was uh, to send a few men early on towards Banana. I'll tell you what, it's two versus two. Sure, Rubino's only on 7 HP, but giving Dignitas benefit of the doubt, if they can isolate one of these two Hellraiser players who are quite spread apart at the moment and you know get the bomb down turn it into a 2 versus one situation they might stand a chance but the commentator's curse kicks in and even though Rubino goes down it actually gives away the position of the CT to Kirby so here we go Kirby will start to plant and it's a game of cat and mouse it's Dane versus Swede Kirby is anticipating no he's not anticipating Schneider to be coming from library and Schneider gets himself a very easy kill Spends a bit of time looking for the bomb, but finds it in the end. Defuses the bomb. And, well, he's going to make it 5-3. Same old story. Dignitas take the lead. And Hellraisers mount the comeback. It's pretty much what we've seen throughout every single map so far today. Yes, indeed. And all recovered for Oscar. So, Oscar will be doing damage with that. I wonder whether he'll mix it up and take it Bernard. Or whether he'll keep peeking from quad side of mid. It looks like she's going to take a peek down mid. This could be deadly for Team Dignitas has to push mid, but they won't. Be a five-man fast banana. That flash from Angel as he starts to spray. Unfortunately, can only get one kill. Maybe, just maybe, if he had an AK-47 or the M4A4 there, that could have ended differently. But Schneider gets a kill through the smoke, and he hears that nade hit one of these terrorists. Out comes the USPS. He gets one. Kucha is going to team kill Schneider. And now Tensky finds himself completely surrounded by angry CTs, by angry Hellraiser players looking to try and track him down. He has the bomb on his back. He's faked that he's gone back down towards Banana, but all it'll take is literally a millimetre of himself peeking that Banana area to go into the crosshair, the crosshair of Oscar, but nope. He's taking his time. Kucha is going to figure out where he is, and Hellraiser's and now pretty much only one round away from evening things up at 5 all. Well, when you consider they were 5 1 down or 5 0 down at one point, I think it was not too shabby. Yeah, it was uh, a little bit of a struggle for Hellraiser to get going, but now they have. You see them going in full swing. However, Cash not 100%. Angel picking up that SMT, or possibly maybe a tactical decision, deciding to pick that up, knowing they'll be against uh, unarmored opponents and just to try and get more cash. Oscar there. Take down MSL Velio on a round. They'll fall back, take their time, and let the task come to them. Schneider has been spotted, and even though he was spotted, he manages to oh, annihilate two Team Dignitas players. And Oscar flexes his pecs with his AWP as well. And uh, there we go. Even Steven Logan, 5 all. Yeah, and. Now would be a good time for Dignitas to mix things up, maybe grab the AWP and challenge Oscar, but no, they're going to keep the BAKs. I'd like to see some sort of mid-wrap on Archside. I haven't really focused Archside that much, it's all been apps and quad and 
pushing up banana, so maybe some sort of smoke off Osco and Quad and wrap Arch a little bit, gain the CT and cause some mayhem, but no. Two players pushing a bottleneck and Stiker will say thank you very much, I'll take those kills. There we go, Stiko gets another, and Hellraiser's looking to take the lead for the first time in this map. This is a really surprising to see, maybe not because they are on that more favoured CT side, but when you consider the amount of momentum Dignitas built up, I'm sure that at 5-0 or at 5-1, uh, they didn't exactly see this coming. And uh, even though Team Dignitas might be okay with going into the second half with only five rounds, I'm sure they would love to go into the second half with at least six or seven. That's really the, the true aim when you're on the terrorist side, to really go into the second half feeling confident. And with Team Dignitas here on the Tech 9 armor push, this could end up being an absolute slaughter if Hellraisers aren't careful. But Kucha goes massive again. He's been brilliant over here towards Banana on this B bomb site. And Dignitas, do they think that this B bomb site is empty because they killed two players? They did, but Schneider was there ready and waiting. So 7 5 now the score. And uh, that sort of armor Tech 9 buy from Team Dignitas, which they could afford, mind you, didn't really pay off in the end. Yeah, it was very unfortunate they didn't count for Snyder, but that's Snyder's role in this Hellraiser team. He doesn't need the amazing comms with his teammates because he just works as a one-man machine, picking different players each round to push and just causing as much damage as possible. And Oscar and Styko down mid just causing damage themselves. It's getting aggressive now. Hellraiser's well and truly in control, not letting the Intas set up at all. This is classic Hellraiser's, this level of aggression. Talking about the aggression, it gives Kucha yet another kill. This man has been on fire, to be honest. Um, only eight kills to his name, but the past two or three rounds, for me, he's really, really stepped it up over on the B defence, so credit where it's due to him. AK is coming back out for Team Dignitas. Mind you, they do have a fair amount of utility. It's just a case of what they can do with it, I guess. Oscar going straight up aggressive towards mid with that AWP of his. Question is, can he catch a glimpse of any Dignitas men? He can, and he's going to kill them. Gets a second, two. Can he make it three? He most certainly can. Oscar, oh, four for Oscar. Fantastic play from the Czech, Kozlovakian, and Kucha will finish things off with the fifth. 9-5 the score. Big play from Oscar there. I was just about to say, he's been quiet this half so far. Sitting near the bottom of the scoreboard, but you know, that's the reality of orping on Inferno. Unless you orp down Banana early and get those early picks, or orp down mid and peak early, you might not see that much action. But he got aggressive that round, felt confident, peaked down mid, had a good spawn for it, felt like he could do it, did tons of damage. And look, here he is going aggressive again and getting a beautiful frag onto Kiebi. That level of aggression, you can't counteract it, you can't expect it. It's just unpredictable and it's deadly. Schneider going aggressive in towards the apartments. He gets a kill. Rubino retaliates with his Galil. And Oscar, the man from the Czech Republic, gets a few more. Hadrick for Oscar. And he left it right uh, he left it late that half. But with the 4K in the round prior to this one, and the 3K that round, he really stepped it up when it mattered most. And this is the thing, Logan. If Hellraisers, you can't help but feel if they can win, they're T-side uh, pistol round, turn 10-5 into 13-5, then for me I can only see one winner. And Hellraiser's win Inferno, there won't be a need for Cobble. They'll be crowned our Go CL Season 2 champions with Absolutely. a 3-1 victory. Clean and easy, that's how you want it. 3-1 to one could potentially be the score if Hellraisers can mount a lot of aggression on this T-side early on. Dignitas will do everything in their power to stop that foe. And they've looked very, very strong on the CT side. This is a map that they should be confident on. Very CT sided. Just comes down to whether they can translate that map advantage into a score advantage. So, see, just one bit of utility picked up for Hellraisers, and that's that smoke. And he'll also buy a Tech 9 and give it to Kusha. So, making that raid Bosch Tech 9 and Kevlar. On. On the uh, CT side, see MSL picking up a kit, flashes, and everyone else going for Kevlar. Mm, and uh, see where MSL's gonna. Yeah, he's gonna be putting that kit at the back of the B bomb site, actually. So uh, let's wait and see where Hellraiser's gonna head. They're taking this slow. 
you know, the good old-fashioned CIS approach. Slow, slow and steady wins the race. Uh, I think Zeus would be proud of, uh, of this, but uh, here we go. Config is falling back to a much more passive position. Doesn't want to get isolated over towards Arch all by himself. If he can get one more kill, this would be superb for the Dane, but instead he's actually let. Hellraise into CT spawn, and now they're going to wrap around the B bomb site. Schneider gets one before finally hitting the deck. Kirby and Co. with a lot of work to do over towards B, and that work starts to get complete. Angel now all by himself at the top of Banana, and you can pretty much hear the sweat trickling down the forehead of Angel as he finds himself in a one versus three, and that forehead is now filled with bullets. 10-6. It was going well for Hellraiser there, they were very aggressive in the face of Dignitas and causing damage, and then suddenly they found themselves in positions like just outside b side on Banana or in CT spawn where the Glocks have a disadvantage against their user USPs, and Kirby showed it the great effect what having a little bit of distance between yourself and a Glock can do, and took a couple of great shots down there to CT spawn, so they didn't really play with the weaponry that they had effectively. Hellraiser need to get up close and personal, stay close to that A site perhaps, plant on site and get in and amongst the Dignitas players. Instead, they took aim battles at range and the USP is always going to come out on top in that scenario. So here we go. What can Hellraisers do here with uh, pretty much little to nothing? Taking their time, hoping that these Dignitas players will get complacent, will push their positions, will go in search of the first kill. But again, we discussed this uh, prior to the start of this map. These Team Dignitas players are very experienced and uh, they're not that susceptible to falling victim to mistakes like that. But here we go. 40 seconds on the clock. Hellraisers realize that the time will come ASAP for them to finally start to make a move. The bomb though has been left on Banana but uh, it's not falling back. It seems like Hellraisers are going to all wrap around Arch and make their way towards a B-bomb site but the bomb has been dropped on Banana with Angel all by himself. Config is going to use that submachine gun to drop not one but two Hellraiser players and with 10 seconds on the clock when you consider the position of the bomb unfortunately Logan even though it's two versus two it's not really going to amount to much. No, but they've managed to salvage that M4 from Lutensky and could be used to deadly effect. If they put that man at front, that's Oscar, with that M4, backed up by Starko with the P90 they salvaged, they could get an easy entry onto either A or B. And once they get that entry, we've got more guns on the floor for the T's to pick up. In fact, they're going to buy up around them. So, they're going to go for the early buy. Pretty much next to no utility at all, except for Snyder. But those weapons recovered allows them to do this. Let's see whether they've got what it takes. Rubino is ready and waiting with that UMP. In lower apps, he gets one kill, but one kill when you're a CT is not going to be enough. Tenski lobs that grenade, deals a bit of damage. You know what the famous supermarket once said every little helps. So Hellraisers, they're going to slowly but surely creepy crawl their way towards this A-bomb site, but if uh, they're not careful, this team to get our side could go aggressive towards B, gather information, but fortunately for Hellraisers, there's only one player on B, which means Kirby does have to play quite passively, and it means that Banana can be controlled by Hellraisers and can be executed from. Absolutely, this uh, heavy stack towards A could cost Dean Taz, but they're doing the right thing now. They're pushing down, realize, hold on, there's no one outside, second, mid, or mid. So they're going to push behind Hellraisers. Oscar's going to see the push any second now. Kills him, so that confirms it's going to be a B push. So Tenski rotates in quickly. That flash could be the difference between a loss and a win. It's delayed these Hellraiser players so much. Tenski sprays through the smoke, gets a kill. Kirby, oh my god, two, gets an M4A4 frag. And with 15 seconds on the clock, Hellraisers need to plant this bomb. It somehow goes down and somehow Comfort cannot find the final hit onto Oscar. He finds it onto Angel and eventually gets rewarded by Lord Gaben as he finds not one but two. Hellraisers not able to make it 11-7 that round. Instead, it's going to be 10-8. 
See, the crucial move there was MSL pushing down mid to get that info. He recognized there was a lack of sound and he had a lack of vision in mid. So he pushes, and while he didn't get any kills and just died, he won the round for his team just by getting that information of guys, there's nothing here, and distracting Hellraisers from behind. As soon as Hellraisers got spotted by him, they had to go. And as soon as they went, they were already flashed and blinded from the players rotating through CT. So great play there from MSL to read the situation and push behind Hellraisers and catch them with their pants down. So Hellraiser's making sure they've got that all-important banana control. They know if they can control banana, they can execute towards B from it. The CTs, however, on the other hand, they've decided to put two players towards B this round. But with so many smokes down there, it doesn't really allow them to go aggressive and push the bottom of banana and leave a CT at tree, for example, to allow another one to rotate round. Because if they can shut off banana, then Team Dignitas pretty much can dedicate most of their men towards the A bomb site. But here we go, they're trying to go aggressive. Angel gets one before Kirby gets revenge and avenges the death of his teammate, but now he's forced to fall back. 40 seconds on the clock, the T's making their way in towards this larger A bomb site. Get killed by Rubinho. Oh, he gets a triple as well. He didn't remove his finger off the trigger and he reaped the rewards. Config is going to find the final kill for this round. And there we have it, ladies and gents. 10-9. Team Dignitas almost doing pretty much what we saw Hellraisers do on Overpass. It's not over until the fat lady sings. They're huffing and puffing. And, you know, they're still in this. Oh, yes, absolutely. And it's been a... It was a great move there from Rubino. Just Evo was smoked off completely, changed his position up, stood, used the enemy smoked against him, used it as a slight wall to peek over onto apartments and gets three incredibly crucial frags there. He delayed the push entirely, shut it down, won the round for his team, kept his cool under a lot of pressure coming up from these Hellraisers push. Hellraisers, not much to work with. Only a smoke in the hands. Rather on the belt of Angel. So here we go. Angel with his Desert Eagle is going to go in search of a Hellraiser frag. And he's dealt damage, but damage isn't enough at this current point in time. Dignitas, they've already rotated an extra man over from B towards A. They're confident this is going to be a push towards the A bomb site, and they're confident that their firepower superiority We'll see them through. Stiko is going to get killed. Rubino is going to get the right Schneider. And in the end, a very, very easy round for Team Dignitas. Hellraiser is not even able to force one death on the Dignitas side. And that's going to do their economy a world of good. And there we go, Logan. 10-10. Sure, Dignitas didn't have an amazing T-half. But their C-T-half has been incredibly solid. And if they keep this up, we're going to cobble. Absolutely. They're digging really deep right now. Odds were stacked against them, and with 10-5 on the half wasn't great, and they're just showing you how much depth of character they have on this squad. They're not going to let themselves get affected by the score, they're just going to play each round as it comes, and they're causing great damage now. They're shutting down every push from Hellraiser, so they just need to keep it up. Keep the fingertips clutched onto that edge. Just keep going each step of the way, one by one. Take each round as it comes, and eventually they'll get there. It'll be Pete in the hands of Oscar. Let's see where he's taken. He's actually he's uh, going very aggressive at, at mid. Looking towards quad side. Seeing if we can find an entry frag of some sort. And you know what? Schneider is. The uh, call comes in that Stiko's going to need help from Schneider. But Tensky goes massive. Two kills for himself. And Kucher, well, he didn't clear out Pit and Config. Punishes him from there. Kirby pushed all the way down Banana and got a kill. And now Team Dignitas, they're the ones back in the lead. Would you believe it? Hellraiser's going into the second half with a 10-5 lead. And again, we're seeing what we saw on Overpass just the other way round. It is just back and forth CS and each side. They're just so closely matched. It's difficult to call which round's going to go which way. I mean, Hellraiser now, but... Massive round loss bonus. They're going to be buying up pretty much every round. CAKs across the board. Invovo on the last round had very little going into it. They're going to have to find a pick somewhere. They've just got to go for aim right now. They can't let Dignitas set up their crossfires like they've been doing. They've got to challenge them one on one, find a weak point, 
get the kill and exploit it. And you've got to exploit it quickly because CTs already have info and are pushing down banana. Zensky gets one before getting traded by the AK-47 of Steko. With a minute on the clock, Hellraiser's... <laughs> Safe to say they've uh, struggled on this terrorist side. They're yet to win one terrorist round, which is very much unlike, you know, a, a, a bog standard Hellraiser side. Kirby's pushed all the way down to tree on Banana, and we haven't really seen Hellraiser bar the first few rounds really toy with the B bomb site much, and it seems like they are neglecting it a little bit. But the fact they're sending one person towards apps despite the MSL kill could maybe see them try and infiltrate it. But nah, Kirby's got it on lockdown, and Logan, hate to say it, but this is very poor play from Hellraiser on this terrorist side. What do you think the issue is? Because this was actually their map pick. It was indeed. I think we need to get an AWP on Oscar. We need to bite the bullet and say, okay guys, this round we're saving. Give Oscar the AWP. Send him towards mid or possibly B. Once all the smokes have begun to fade, and then just say, hey Oscar, go frag. Just following him in his trail of destruction that he's caused. Right now they're just constantly buying, forcing, buying and forcing and they're not really building up enough bank to actually afford the orb. Rubino runs a headshot onto Oscar <laughs> and uh, well like you said you think back to Cash and Mirage and Overpass it was when Oscar had that AWP in his hands, in his grasp for Hellraisers, that they really look like a different side, and they just haven't been able to mount, oh, mount enough money to be able to buy it up here on Inferno. That small bit of team attack ain't going to help either. As team Dignitas go in search of uh, round number 13 to add to the scoreboard. Emerson did find himself with a heck of a load of very easy M4A4 kills if he's not careful. It's actually going to be Kucha to kill him with the Rec 9 through the smoke. And now we could just see either Hellraiser's fall back or maybe all get together, all congregate together at the top of Banana and YOLO push the B bomb site. They've got to try and brute force a bomb plant in some way, shape, or form. But they've not really got the utility to be able to do it. So it's got to come soon. Tenski ready for it. Rips off the face of Angel. Kirby is going to get a kill as well. And in the end, not much how Razors could have really done there. I think they would be much better off rather than trying to walk in, just biting the bullet, like you said earlier on, and just sort of hitting it thick and fast and trying to surprise their opponents. It's tough to call with such a solid defence like this. Didn't have set up and got so much morale and cash in the bank. It's so hard to find an opening. It gets harder and harder each round. You begin to mount pressure on yourself, saying, come on, guys, we're running out of rounds to do this. And the more pressure you mount on yourself, the harder it gets to make that crucial shot in that situation, the harder it is to think straight, and I think Hellraisers right now are beginning to choke. They had this game in their grasp going into this half, and they're choking, and they're choking hard right now. They need to shake themselves out of it, maybe take a pause, because it can't go on like this. Well, the community are normally uh, used to team choke Natas, but it seems like it's going to be choke raises so far. Angel, though, wants to put a change to that. They've forgotten to check Pit a few times in the past, and not really much they could have done there. Just sheer brilliance from Config, but he's made them pay the price again. Tenski will get an easy spray down onto Schneider, and now Stiko in a 1 versus 3, and I don't think we're going to see much. He's only on 32 HP. He's got little to no utility. That flashbang is going to give away his position, and even though he's gotten that cheap kill onto Tenski, as long as KB and Config play this by the book, don't find themselves in a few 1 versus 1s, then it should be winnable. But maybe, just maybe, I'm going to live to regret what I just said. Stiko knows that Config is going to be in pit. The call's going to come in from his teammates, and Logan, he's got his running shoes on. He's got his Adidas trainers on. He's running straight towards a B-bomb site. Conving needs to stop and kill him before he plants. He's just a second too late. He knows the bomb will be going down right about now. Oh, oh and Stiko chooses not to plant. This is a bold call. Oh, Stiko! Oh, no! Config gets the kill in the end. So close to Stiko, but Config, he just about realised that the bomb, that the plant wasn't going down, turned just at the right time. And, well, it was just a case of who was going to react first. And it was a Dignitas man. That is a bold strategy not to plant the bomb in that situation. Could have planted safe and at least got his team some money, but chose to go for the frag and 
it was 50-50 which way it was going to go and just so happened that even though the didn't test player looked away at the wrong moment he looked back in time and Hellraisers were left stunned, dazed and confused what a round you know what they say, pros don't fake eh? <laughs> here we go, Oh, Sneeko oh, getting revenge for that last round and Shania didn't seem uh, too big of a fan of that, as he ends up team killing Stiko. We've had a few uh, team kills to say the least so far in this best of five grand final. Um, here we go, three on three. As Team Dignitas look to secure match point here in normal time of Inferno. Hellraisers will not allow it to occur though. They fought their way into this B-bomb site, they planted the bomb. And Logan, they're going to make it 14-11. Oh, fair play to him. I think what actually happened there, somehow Angel accidentally switched team. Uh, MSL said it took their focus. So, I don't know what went on there, and that was a little bit weird. Angel must have accidentally pressed M and a number uh, as he died and ended up changing teams because of it. Kappa. Yeah, well, accidentally, deliberately, on, I don't know. Whatever it is, Dignitas claim that distracted them. They don't seem that annoyed, though. Just a friendly mistake. Gotta let it go, and somehow Hellraisers have won a round and all that. There we go. Very, very aggressive defense coming out from the B defense by Team Dignitas. They know that they gave away that bomb site in the last round. They want to ensure that the same does not occur again. Schneider is going to get dropped by Rubino. And there we go, the good old Go TV lag as MSL gets a spray down frag of his own. And now it's a great crossfire, really, on the A bomb set from the Team Dignitas lads. Kirby's going to. Well, that flash failed a little bit, but it's not really going to matter. I assume he's going to push all the way down towards T set from the bottom of Banana. It looks like, it looked like rather what he was trying to do, but in a 3 versus 1. Oscar, this he can't do much. He really can't. And Team Dignitas, they secure match point. If they manage to win this, what a comeback. What a fantastic comeback. Uh, and what a way to pick yourselves up. You know, as well, when you consider the fact they started on the terrorist side and what happened to them on overpass, what a fight back from them. It really is. It's uh, a depth of character, as I said before. They just don't give up, do they? They just keep fighting and fighting and... Sure, they had that really disappointing defeat on Overpass, but they really should have won, but they've not let it get to them, and they managed to bring back this to 15-11 with a superb CT off. Didn't have such a great CT team, but they're proving it right now, and MSL, he's going to lock this down, I believe. <laughs> MSL and Kirby, the in-game leader and the apprentice, or rather the expert and the apprentice. Flash going down, MSL... Oh, and aggro with that Rack 9. And uh, Team Dignitas can pretty much smell cobble. And Logan, that's exactly where we're heading. 